Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a preview of the first Panzerlosch, a new division available in the upcoming Men of Steel DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC, so a big thanks to them. Also, please remember that this was recorded on a preview build, so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right-hand side, feel free to pause and take a look, but we're going to be jumping straight on in. Let's have a look at the Recon tab, which of course starts with a sidecar, the BMW 750MG. This is worse than other sidecars because it doesn't even have radio. Unfortunate. Then we have the 39M Chaba, available in Phase A and B, 6 and 9 availability. Comes with the 39M anti-tank rifle and the 8mm machine gun there. It's a rather ineffective armoured car. Then we have the BMW 750 with the Solothurn on it. Four available in Phase A, could be used for some cheeky transport snipes early on. We have the Feldedito Yaror available in phase A and B, 5 available in A, 10 available in B, decent availability to be honest. Uh, we have them available on the BMW, the Botond, the Group 37M and the M38MBG5 which is a decently fast Jeep. Then we have the Toldy 2A available five in phase a these do come with the 40 mil guns so they do have he and this is actually relatively good for harassing infantry so for 25 points you get a gun that can kill enemy light armor and potentially medium armor and also has he and a machine gun to deal with infantry 30 millimeter the frontal armor and decent off-road speed five available in a no bet then we move on to the Lovash Feldelitok. And they have the one submachine gun there with the 10 rifles and then the Solothurn machine gun. 12 strength with recon, 3 available in A, 6 available in B, 9 available in C, coming with the Botond the truck. Finally, we have the first of the German units that are going to be joining the Hungarians in this one. The SS Reit Aufklade. These are actually a pretty scary recon squad in that they come with two MP40s, three MP44s, and four Car 98s. This combination of weapons, particularly at the sort of mid range when both the MP44s and the cars are firing, they're actually going to be able to put out a decent amount of damage since they're coming at one vet. You can get them to three vet nice and easy, and then they're going to be hitting pretty hard. Nine strength recon squad as well allows them to stick around for a long time and uh, provide all the information that you need. So a decent phase B option for sure. Let's move into the infantry tab. First off, we have plenty of disheartened troops. We've got the Tartar Lake, Lovis, uh, 12 available in A, 24 in B. They come with one submachine gun, 10 rifles, and the Madsen automatic rifle. The automatic rifle means that it can move and shoot and therefore fire within the 100 meter range. Um, for 12 strength squad, they're actually equipped relatively well uh, for 15 points. So you might see quite a lot of these used. Yeah, 12 and 24 availability is good as well. Next up, we have the Tata Lake Akosok. These guys are a 13 man pioneer squad, basically with the HE bundle grenade. So one submachine gun, 12 rifles and the bundle grenade. Eight available in A, 12 available in B. Now similar to Urzat's pioneers, the fact that they have the disheartened trait can actually be useful in a sense that they will always be able to fall back once they throw the grenade. So when you're having a situation where you're fighting pioneers versus pioneers and you both have bundle grenades or TNT, you can make sure that you're always retreating as soon as you see the enemy throw their TNT. Uh, so that's what you're going to want to do. And uh, the fact they have disheartened trait means you're almost always going to be able to do that. Next up, we have the Kedak Palasok, available in Phase A. Nine available for 20 points. 13-man squad, two submachine guns, the 10 rifles there, and the Solothurn. Relatively decent line infantry to be honest 
Next up though, we have the Mot Loves. Now these are much better line infantry because they have the MG42. But nine available in A, 18 in B, and 27 in C is good availability. And yeah, two submachine guns. These submachine guns are actually really good as well. Because although they don't get the 150 meter range, they have 80% accuracy, which is pretty decent. But yeah, eight rifles, MG42 is the big one here. 20 point squad with an MG42 is always nice, and they get the Panzerfaust. 11 strength, good value for money. Next, we have the Rohamachasok. These guys have two of the Hungarian submachine guns, the Danuvia, uh, the two MP40s, the flamethrower, and the smoke. They've got the shock trait, which means they take less damage within 100 meters. And yeah, four, five available in A, 10 available in B, with one vet. So your standard sort of five strength flamer squad. Next up, we have the Lovace Tist, your five strength leader with smoke, three available in A, six available in B, at one vet. And we have the Mot Lovace Tist, which are a five strength leader once again. But these guys come with five submachine guns, which is actually a really nice loadout. And when, when a squad has all the same guns, it makes them like specific for certain situations. And in this case, obviously when they get spotted and found at close range. Uh, but these submachine guns, as I mentioned already, are pretty effective due to that accuracy. And with the extra veterancy, you can see it's almost 100%. So three available in A, six available in B. Do have the smoke to keep themselves alive at range as well. Decent leader squad. Next up, we have the Mot Akasok, a really nice squad. Again, they've got two submachine guns, eight rifles, MG42, uh, but they also have the HE bundle grenade. Five available in A, 10 available in B, 15 available in C. Really good pioneer unit. Then we have the Arkaz Tist which is a six strength leader squad with two submachine guns, three rifles, machine gun, and the Faust Patron. Not the best leader ever. Honestly, it doesn't even give you radio. Next, we have the German troops joining us in the infantry tab. The SS Reitführer is your first one. With four strength leader with radio. Two of the Hungarian SMGs with the MP44 there as well and three smoke grenades actually a not a terrible leader squad for the mid to late game and we have the ss radiega available from phase b 16 available in b 24 available in c uh, very good squad two of the strong submachine guns eight car 98s and two mg42s making them very similar to uh, panzergrands but they are a 12 strength squad, so that definitely helps out a lot for 30 points. Finally, we have the SS Red Pioneer available in phase B. This is a 10 strength double flamethrower squad, which is actually really scary. So you've got four MP40s, four car 98s. This isn't crazy, but double flamethrower with 10 strength and shock trait. That's definitely going to do well in close range, of course. Let's move on to the tank tab. Now, this is, of course, the first Panzerloch, which is the pretty much first armoured Hungarian division. So here we have lots of Toldis and Turans. We've got the Toldi 2 to start off with. This is a pretty shocking tank in that it comes with a 20mm anti-tank rifle as its main armament and only one machine gun. The 10 available in A, 15 in B with one bet. And we got the Toldi 2 leader. Now this is a little bit more forgivable because it is a leader uh, for 10 points, which is actually really cheap. Then we move on to the Turan 1s. The Turan 1s have a 40mm gun with 75mm of penetration. Actually your best option against enemy armor, but like even over the Turan 2s. So you can get a lot of these. 30 points apiece. You get 6 in A, 9 in B, 18 in C. You get 3 cards that you can bring in of them. So, 
plenty of opportunity to use these. But yeah, 50 mils frontal armor, have HE and two machine guns, so they're actually pretty decent against infantry as well. What's better against infantry though is the Turan 2s. We can also get Turan 1 leaders, three available in A, six in B, and nine in C. No radio, just leader trait, unfortunately. Then we have the Turan 2. As I mentioned, it's a little bit different in that it has a 90 mil penetration on its heat round. And the heat round is okay, but the 75 millimeter penetration on the AP shell here actually scales better than the Turan's heat round at close range. So uh, that's why the Turan ones are generally better in those situations. But the Turan two is still a really good tank, especially for infantry support because it gets 200, what 200, 2.2 damage uh, on its main gun with two machine guns and 50 mils of frontal armor. So four available in A, eight in B, and 12 in C. Also get to Turan 2 leaders, one, two, and three availability. The availability on these is shocking, so probably never gonna see them used. Finally, we do have some Stugs, and we are gonna see some more Stugs later on, uh, but for now, the first of the Stugs available in the tank tab, 90 mils of frontal armor with the 75 mil gun. It is a an ace unit. I am probably going to absolutely wreck the name here, but we'll give it a go. Bojige. I'll get back to that one. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn it like I did Tadzaya. Well, yeah, we'll get there. Two available in A, four available in B. Good leader radio potential there. And pretty much the best tank in this tab. Um, otherwise you're reliant on these turrets so far. Alright, support tab. First of all, the Flamers, the Lang Sodoshok. These guys are available 6 in A and 9 in B. You can bring them in with the motorcycle, the Boton, the Krupp or the M38. And yeah, these do have shock trait now, these uh, Flamer squads generally speaking. So something to think about, that's for sure. There is the Tartalek. 50 mil available, 6 in A, 12 in B. Disheartened 50 mil mortar. They require a lot of micro to be effective. Then we have the Chendor. These guys are a fanatical military police squad. Uh, four available in A, eight, six available in B. They get four submachine guns, eight rifles, and a solar turn. 13 strength uh, fanatical military police is actually a pretty chunky, decent squad. Then we have the Schwaloza, 6 available in A, 12 available in B, 20 available in C at 1 veteran C. Uh, you got the bot on the Krupp and the M38 as transport potential. Then there's also MG34s which are going to be the better option. 6 available in A, 12 in B and 18 in C. There is German IGs joining us with the 8 in phase B, 12 in phase C availability, a 75mm gun with the 1,500m 1, range with the 2.2 damage, pretty decent to infantry gun. There are three cards available of supply, two available in A, 4 in B and 6 in C on those trucks with 10,000 supply per truck. Then we have our commander options, first of all the Steer, one truck, the Loves on the ground, and the Chaba. Moving on to the anti-tank. We have first of all the Tartalek Nehespuska. This is a two-man AT rifle squad with disheartened trait. The Solothurn, very nice AT weapon to be honest. 10 points you get 8 in phase A and 12 in phase B. So really good potential in the early game to be honest. There's also the Hungarian rocket launcher available. The Raketaveto. <laughs> 6 available in A, 12 available in B, and 18 available in C. You're probably going to want to make use of these for that 250 meter range, 90, 190 millimeter penetration. Similar stats, I believe, to a Zuka. Let's move on to the 75mm gun. 4 available in A, 6 available in B. These guns are actually really scary, uh, very underrated. For 30 points, they are extremely strong. 
with the 90 mils of penetration on that heat round. They get a 60 mil AP round and they also get HE rounds which have 2.2 damage. So really nice AT gun, honestly, it's incredibly versatile. Then there's the 40 mil. This does get the rockets that it can put on the end uh, with the 180 millimeter penetration there. So six available in A, eight available in B. These are pretty much long range uh, anti-tank weapons <laughs> in the sense that compared to like a bazooka or something, it's like a long range bazooka, 750 meter range. And we got uh, pack 40s available in B, which is nice of the Germans to bring those along. Certainly rounds out the AT tab a little bit. And then the Stugs, I mentioned there would be more Stugs on show. In this division, they come in in the anti-tank tab. Now they are available in A, B, or C. So it's up to you when you want to bring in your best tanks, because these are your best tanks in this division. Uh, they're much better than the Turans and the Turan 2s. Uh, they have the 135 mils of penetration with the 90 mils of frontal armor, uh, 80 points, uh, 5, 10, 15 availability. Next up, we have the anti-air tab. So first of all, the Nimrod, probably one of the best anti-air vehicles in the game, to be honest. It's an armored uh, unit with a 40 mil that is extremely potent. It has 75 mils of penetration against ground targets. And then its HE on its bullets is... I think, I, I don't know why, I always feel like these do slightly better than like normal Bofors and stuff, even though they're the same caliber. But yeah, three available in A, six available in B, and nine available in C. And you get three cards potentially of these. Then there's the 40 mil on the ground. Three available in A, six available in B. Can come in with a uh, different type of transport here that's t slightly faster. This 37M group. Uh, bear in mind, whenever you can bring it, you probably should, even though you, you only get a limited amount of them, but they are faster than the Botond. And there's the Nimrod 42M. Uh, the 42M variant is 10 points more, and what you're paying for is the massive rocket that you can put on the front of it, uh, which gives you 200 millimeters of penetration, but only 30% accuracy at 750 meter range. So incredibly unreliable but high penetration rocket that can kill really heavy targets. Two available in A, four in B, six in C. There are 88s available, manned by Hungarians. Two available in A, four available in B. So a good anti-tank option, to be honest, because these do have 40% accurate 160 mil penetration AP shells. So yeah, definitely an option for sort of early to mid game AT where you might lack uh, elsewhere. There's also the SDK Z71. So we're getting more of the juicy German units in this one. In this case, four available in B, which is actually really nice for flag fillings. Let's move on to the artillery tab. First of all, we have the Tuzarek, two man observer squads, three available in A, six available in B, two submachine guns and smoke, recon radio, exceptional stealth standard stuff. Then we have the Tuzatis, which are your artillery leaders. I uh, can come in with the Krupp and the Botond and man squad. Just a reminder that the artillery leader trait in after the Men of Steel DLC will give radio trait to nearby tube artillery and reduce their dispersion. Um, that's only tube artillery, not mortars, not rockets. Two available in A, four available in B, six available in C. 75mm gun is available here. These are a gun that could probably benefit quite significantly from radio, from the Tuzatist. So, for example, you get four on A with one vet, they cost 50 points. And they're cheap because they don't have any radio. But then you put it as a test next to them, all of a sudden you've got four 75mm guns with radio that are going to be more effective. It's a, it's really a nice combination. And you get four in A, six in B, eight in Z. But that's just an example. I mean, in this case, it might not be that good, but um, something to try out. Then we got 81mm mortars, 
4 available in A, 8 available in B, 12 available in C. No radios on these, unfortunately. And the Hungarians do get their hands on some Nebelwerfer 41s. So 1 available in Phase 8, 3 available in B, and 5 available in C. Bringing these in with these tractors is tempting, because these tractors do give supply. But just bear in mind that these tractors are incredibly slow, that... Uh, you know, if these get counter batteried once you fire them, <laughs> you might not be out of the way before that counter battery lands. And moving on, we have some 105s, the LEFH 105. This is a middling AT or artillery weapon. We have three in A, six in B, nine in C availability there. 120 mil mortars are an option. Two in A, four in B. Availability on these actually kind of terrible and you only have one card available so not sure it'd be worth bringing these in but sometimes 120 more mortars can hit the mark it's just kind of rng then we have the 149 millimeter big gun this thing has radio trait so it can be quite accurate at range but one available in a two available in b and four available in c and just bear in mind that if you put like the tizzitus next to an artillery gun like this it will reduce their dispersion so these can be even more accurate than they would even be with their radio trait which is cool finally we have the air tab uh, starting off with the uh, focke wolf 189a2 there is two available in a four available in b and eight available in c Unfortunately, those don't come with any bomb payload, otherwise they would be a nice option. In this case, just air-to-air -air machine guns. But uh, recon, radio, it's all right. I mean, it's bad bad resilience. It's it's actually not all right. <laughs> then we have J87D5s available in phase B as recon, potentially. 20 mils in the wings uh, can make them deal with enemy aircraft potentially but yeah otherwise again bad resilience 395 kilometer per hour speed the only reason you're probably bringing these is because the fog wolf 189 is because they're your only recon option in phase a there is me 210s available as air to air these get two 20 mils in the nose with two 7.92 mil machine guns and yeah 540 kilometer per hour speed with medium resilience they're okay as sort of like intercepting aircraft but they're not going to really be able to turn fight against enemy fighters there is a card of ju 87 d5s available but only in b and c ju 87s are usually good in the early game or extreme late game and the reason for that is because there's generally no aa at those two points uh, in phase a you can sometimes get away with like doing strafing runs with these early on in order to get some good damage down. And then in the late game, the extreme late game, that's usually when like artillery has counter batteried a lot of the enemy AA or you've made a breakthrough somewhere and they haven't brought up any new AA. And yeah, then your JU-87s can run rampant. So yeah, I'm not sure how, how efficient these will be in this division, but they are an option. There's also the JU-87 D5 with the one... 500 kilogram bomb to 250 kilogram bombs again available from B so four available in B seven available in C there's also the cluster bomb variant available in B and C four available in B six in C cluster AP very effective cluster bomber to be honest if you can get it on target it's just a matter of can you get it close enough before it gets shot down or forced back uh, and bad resilience does mean that these go down pretty easy then we have the BF-109 G14U4, and this is where the Hungarian Air Force is getting a little bit of an upgrade, getting some of the latest BF-109s, 30mm nose gun with two 13mm machine guns, 670km per hour speed is very fast indeed, 6 available in B and 8 available in C is good availability as well, so yeah, a nice fighter for the Hungarians. JU-88 is a decent late game bomber here for 250 kilogram bombs. Very good resilience. You get six on a card in phase C. HS-129 B2R4 is another late game AT option with a cluster. 
the cluster on these they need to be pretty much not stunned at all in order to get a kill with it um so you, you basically need the enemy to have no aa whatsoever if you want these to be effective uh, but otherwise they do are very good resilience and if you have multiple of them there's also more chance of them breaking through an aa net and because they do have very good resilience they might not get shot down as well then there's the option of the hs129b3 which is actually quite likely to be an early game AT option. It comes with the 75mm gun with the 175mm of penetration. Uh, this thing can be an absolute menace. Uh, so one available in A, two available in B, and four available in C. An interesting air tab, that's for sure. Defenses wise, you've got Solothurn AT rifle bunkers and Shvalos and machine gun bunkers. That's pretty much it. Here's a deck I made earlier. In the recon tab, I just went for the Lovash Ferdaditok in phase A because they're a chunky recon squad that will stick around for a long time. Uh, then we got the SS Light Halfclutter in phase B because I really want to try them out and they seem like a, a relatively decent recon squad. In the infantry tab, we're going for the Tata Lake Arkasok in phase A for my close range. Uh, Mot Loves with one vet in phase B. A as well, got 12 of those with the Mot Loves Tist. In phase B, we're going for the German infantry. We've got the SS Reitjäger uh, with one vet, and I've also got the SS Reit Pioneer with one vet. So we can make them three vet. That's a 10 uh, man uh, potential three vet double flamer squad. <laughs> So yeah, it could be pretty nasty. Then in phase C, I've got Motakasok, which do have the MG42s, uh, plus the bundle grenade, and then the Raidjäger to bring the double MG42s, of course. In the tank tab, we're going to be using Torans and Toran 1s, or Taran 2s, sorry, in phase A and uh, B here. So giving them all one vet. And then we've got the um, A Stug, and then more Torans in phase C. In the support tab, we're going for MG34s in phase A. I'm going to be bringing in supply in phase A and B. And then I've got a infantry commander. Anti-tank tab, definitely bring in the 75 mil. It's really good value. Uh, Stug 3s at 2 vet in phase A so that we can get off to a good start. Phase B, pack 40s to help deal with like medium and potentially heavy armor if you get side shots. And then... Stug 3s with 2 vet in phase C, so just giving us a bit more oomph to get us through the late game. And yet, yeah, relying entirely on the Nimrods and the uh, flag filling, since I'm going to be getting 6 Nimrods from A and B with 1 vet, I decided to even bring the flag filling in on the SDKZ71 here uh, with uh, 1 vet. So this is going to be an incredibly strong AA tab. Artillery, I'm going for both of the Nebelwerfer 41s in phase A. Uh, that's also the reason that I'm bringing in the buttons in phase A because these buttons will come and pick up these 150s and move them around after they've fired and resupply them. It means I don't have to rely on the tractors, which are really slow. And then in phase C, I'm going to be using the tractors to pull in the 149 mils uh, and provide them with supply. It is quite costly late game, but this is going to be the primary way of you surviving in the late game versus heavier targets. And in the air tab, I did go for the Focke Wolf 189 recon, just because it's the only air recon option in phase A, so that I can really make good use out of the HS129B3, which is a really nice anti-tank option in the early game. I've got the fast BF109s in phase B with the extra vet, and then the JU88 bombers in phase C to come up the rear, because HE in general is going to be your late game option for dealing with armor. And that's your lot for the first Pan Salosh. So hopefully you, you guys enjoyed this look at the first Pan Salosh. Personally, I think it's a pretty interesting division. Maybe not the strongest in this DRC, but there is going to definitely be like spam versions of this, which I think will actually be potentially better than what I have in front of you here. Uh, if you make a lot of use out of the Tadalek units, uh, plus the Turan 1s and the Turan 2 in large numbers, that could be really fun. So looking forward to seeing what people do with this division but that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye